It was 30th May 1959. The People's Action Party was basking in the euphoria of an electrifying electoral victory. To decide on who will be the Prime Minister, a secret ballot was cast. With the difference of one vote, Mr Lee Kuan Yew went on to be Prime Minister, a post he held for the next 31 years. Born to a Straits Chinese Peranakan Hakka family on 16 September 1923, to a father just 20, a mother 16, Mr Lee is the eldest of five children. He grew up with three brothers, one sister and seven cousins living at 92 Kampong Java Road. As a young boy, Mr Lee often played with the children of the Chinese fishermen and of the Malays living in a nearby kampong. He had no fancy clothes or shoes and no great abundance of toys. His father had been brought up a rich man's son, but the fortunes of both parents' families were destroyed in the Great Depression. He went to Tilokurao Primary School, Raffles Institution and Raffles College, where he met his future wife Kwa Gyok Chu. Mr Lee had wanted to study law at Cambridge University, but the outbreak of the Second World War delayed his plans. During the Japanese occupation, Mr Lee worked as an English language editor for the Hodobu, a Japanese government propaganda publication, and operated a successful black market business selling tapioca-based glue. Mr Lee's relationship with Kwa Gyok Chu blossomed through the years of the Japanese occupation. After the war, Mr Lee went on to study law at Cambridge University in England in 1946. Kwa joined him a year later. In December 1947, the couple married in secret in London. They later officially tied the knot in Singapore on 30th September 1950. He had tremendous aplomb, self-confidence, uh, very jaunty. He was a handsome young man. After graduation, Mr Lee returned to Singapore to start practicing law, but found his true vocation in the tumultuous politics of the time. Seeing the need for a developed political system to replace British colonial rule, Mr Lee started the People's Action Party on 21st November 1954, together with a group of English-educated men, including Dr To Chin Chai, Dr Go King Sui and S Raja Ratnam. Mr Lee became Secretary General, a post he held until 1992. The PAP, led by Mr Lee, contested and won the Tanjong Paga seat in the 1955 elections, pitting himself against David Marshall's Labour Front-led coalition government. In the national elections on 1st June 1959, the PAP won 43 of the 51 seats in the Legislative Assembly, and Mr Lee became the first Prime Minister of Singapore. The months that followed were paved with challenges. Mr Lee struggled to cope with rising unemployment, insufficient housing and poor education. Faced with these problems, economic concerns and pressure from the pro-communist factions, Mr Lee began to campaign for a merger with Malaysia to end British colonial rule in 1961. On September 16, 1963, Singapore became part of the Federation of Malaysia. Do hereby proclaim and declare on behalf of the people of Singapore that as from today, the 16th of September, 1963, Singapore shall forever be a part of the sovereign, democratic and independent state of Malaysia. However, the union was short-lived. Conflicts over unequal distribution of wealth, decreased trade, higher demand for Singapore's revenues and most significantly racial politics caused tensions to rise. Unable to resolve the crisis, Malaysian Prime Minister Tunku Abdul Rahman decided that Singapore should separate from Malaysia. Mr Lee tried to work out a compromise, but without success. In a televised press conference, Mr Lee broke down emotionally as he announced the separation. I had believed in Malaysian merger and the unity of these two territories. You know, as a people connected by geography, economics and ties of kinship. On 9th August 1965, Singapore became an independent nation. Mr Lee now faced the formidable task of building a new nation, the start of a journey that will forever change his life and the life of Singaporeans. I am nobody's stooge. I am not here to play somebody else's game. 
I have. A few million people's lives to account for. And Singapore will survive.